All right, let's see if we can tackle this problem. Please remember that we're just going to do our very best on this problem and try to get as many points as we can possibly get. All right, here we go. There is no snow on Janet's driveway when snow begins to fall at midnight. From midnight to 9 a.m., snow accumulates on the driveway at a rate modeled by the function given cubic feet per hour, where T is measured in hours since midnight. Janet starts removing snow at 6 a.m., T equals 6. The rate G in cubic feet per hour at which Janet removes the snow from the driveway is modeled by the function G. And this is a piecewise function because just different things are happening. She probably um, started shoveling nicely and then got kind of tired, so didn't shovel as much. Okay, part A. How many cubic feet of snow have accumulated on the driveway by 6 a.m.? Okay, we want to know how much snow. So we just want cubic feet. And I noticed that up here, and we're accumulated, so I'm going to be looking at the accumulated um, model, which is this one right here. And I noticed that this one says cubic feet per hour. And if I just want cubic feet, I know that I'm going to have to take the integral. So to get how much snow has accumulated on the driveway, um, I'm going to go from 0 to 6 because it started at midnight. So it started at t equals 0, and then we're stopping at 6. And then I'm just going to put the rate in there, or I could rewrite it as 0 to 6, 7t e to the cosine t. And then from there, I'm going to let my calculator do the work for me. And when I let my calculator do the work for me, I'm going to get 142. 0.275 and my label should be how many cubic feet of snow that's how many cubic feet of snow there was all right that problem was worth two points you got one point if you had the integral set up right you got one point for getting the correct answer okay part b <clears throat> excuse me find the rate of change of volume of the snow on the driveway at 8. Okay, we know that snow has been falling, but starting at 6 o'clock, we also know that Janet has started removing the snow. So if I want to find the rate of change of the volume of snow on the driveway at 8 a.m., <clears throat> um, since I'm talking about um, rate of change, I know that I'm talking about a derivative. But if I look at this, this rate of change is like cubic feet per hour. Notice that this is cubic feet per hour. And then also the rate at which Janet is removing the snow is also in cubic feet of hour per hour. So since I'm looking for a rate, these are already rates. So if I want to find out how much snow is on the driveway at 8, all I need to do is figure out how much snow is going on to the driveway. So it's going to be f of 8 and subtract how much snow Janet is removing from the driveway. Okay, and again, since these are already rates, we can simply just plug numbers in. Okay, when I do f of 8, that means I'm going to do 7 times 8 times e to the cosine 8. And then minus g of 8, um, I'm going to use this part right here because 8 falls in that between 7 and 9. So I know that g is simply just 108. Okay, um, if you calculated this, this should be 48.417 minus 108, so my answer will be negative 59.583. And since it asked for a rate of change, we know that's going to be cubic feet per hour. Okay, that part of the problem was simply just worth one point. You either got the right answer or you did not. All right. Um, part C, let H of T, this is the killer, just warning you here. Okay, let H of T represent the total amount of snow in cubic feet that Janet has removed from the driveway at T time T hours after midnight. Express H as a piecewise defined function with the domain 0 to 9. Okay, so we're going to go ahead, we're going to use the rate thing, and so we're going to use a piece, this is just a piecewise function, it's separated into parts. So our answer will be separated into part parts. And you'll notice that H is the total amount of snow that she's been removing. So we're going to use G. Remember, G was measured in cubic feet per hour. So if I just want amount of snow or cubic feet, I know that I'm going to have to take the integral at each spot. So we're going to put, it's not going to be G anymore. This time it's going to be H. Okay, to get the first one between 0 and 6, um, basically all I need to do um, to get the H, we know it's going to be an integral, so I'm going to take the integral from 0 to any time t because I know it's somewhere between 0 and 6. I don't know definitely that it's going to go all the way till 6, and we'll go ahead and put g of t in there. And for this, <coughs> g of t for this one is 0, so if you take the integral of 0, it will just be a constant. And if I evaluate it at t and 0, um, 
there's no place to plug the t, so it's still going to be a constant minus a constant, so that will be 0. And I'll clean this up and we'll write it a little bit neater in just a second. So, all right, and I actually maybe, I wish there was a spot. So we're going to put 0, your answer will be, oh, I'm going to put it up here. Okay, so we're going to have h of t equals 0 for 0 is less than or equal to t is less than 6. Okay, so it matches g this time. Okay, the second one we need to figure out, okay, to get from the next one, when I'm going 6 to 7, we do have to keep in mind what's been happening before. So I'm going to do 0 to 6 of 0, because this time we are going to go all the way to 6, because we have to get to somewhere between 6 and 7, plus the integral of from 6 to some time t, because it's going to be some time in between 6 and 7, of 125. Okay, um, this one we kind of already established is just going to be 0, and then plus, if the integral of 125 is 125t, and I'm going to evaluate it at t and 6. So if I do that, I'm going to get 0 plus <clears throat> um, 125t minus 125 times 6, I believe is 750. But that certainly doesn't sound right. Let me try my calculator here. 5 times 6. Is 750. Okay, so we get that. So 0 plus 125t minus 750 is simply that. So it's going to be 125t minus 750, and that's for any time between 6 and 7. Okay, for the last one now, um, we're going to assume that we've gone from 0 to 6, we've gone from 6 to 7, and now we're going to go from 7 to some time t that's between 7 and 9. Okay, so this one we already found out was 0. This one we didn't find out. Um, if I would have taken, it's going to be 125t. This time I'm going from 6 and I'm, I'm going up to 7, so it's actually going to reach 7. If I do that, let's see, 125 times 7 is 875 minus 125 times 6 was 750, so that will equal 125. And then this one, so I'm going to have 0 plus 125, plus, for this one, the integral of 108 is 108t, and we get to evaluate from 7 to some time t, which we don't know. So this is going to be 125 plus 108t minus 108 times 7, which is 756. And then I'm going to combine these terms right here, and when I do that, I'm going to get 108t minus 631. So my last step is going to be 108t minus 631, and that's what was happening any time between 7 and 9. Okay, so that is what they were looking for on that problem. Okay, this problem was worth three points. You got one point if you got the first part of the problem right, you got one point for the second part, and one point for the third part. So that one might have been a little trouble for us, but we got through. Okay, this one says how many cubic feet of snow are on the driveway at 9 a.m.? All right, so how many cubic feet of snow? Again, I know that I'm going to have to take the integral of what's going on the driveway and how much is going off the driveway. So I'm going to take how much is going on the driveway, which would be the integral of f, and subtract how much has been going on the driveway from 0 to to not how much she shoveled off of the driveway. Okay, so, and actually I can, I'm going to skip this step because we actually, h is already the integral, so I can simply found out, find out how much um, snow is been taken, Janet has removed from the driveway simply from using my h formula. Okay, so the integral from 0 to 9, I'm going to let my math 9 do the work for me, and when I do that I'm going to get 367.9. 335, and then minus h of 9. To get h of 9, I'm going to go into the third formula, and that's going to be 108 times 9 minus 631. And when I calculate that, I believe I get 341. But let me just double check here. And I am right, I get 341. Okay, so if I subtract those two, I will get 226.335 cubic feet of snow. All right, that part was worth three points. If I had an integral set up, 
which I did right here, that would have been worth one point. So I think that we could probably get the point with that because we're just looking at how many feet of snow. And then um, the second point we'd get, if we found out what H of nine was, if we found out we that it, that was 341, we would have gotten a point. And then we would have gotten a point for our final answer, which was 26.335. So all together, that should be worth nine points. That was a killer, but hopefully, um, especially with a little bit of guidance, you are able to make it through.